we're going to be talking about anemia here. So um, what percentage of the chronic kidney disease population gets anemic? And, and what is the etiology of the anemia? So I think um, to start with, uh, as Dan and I mentioned, uh, the worse your kidney function, the more likely you are to be anemic. So as we move through the stages, uh, CKD stage one and two, very unusual to be anemic. I indeed, if you are anemic, you should look for other causes. The anemia focuses on the kidney because it's actually the kidney, the uh, erythropoietin uh, producing cells within the kidney that produce erythropoietin and then stimulates the bone marrow to, uh, to make uh, hemoglobin or to make uh, red cells. As you progress through a stage three and four, well, stage three, it's about 5% patients are anemic. Stage four, it's 40%. By the time you're at stage five and ba basically ready to progress to kidney failure, it's as high as 70%. So again, this is something that we track very, very closely because there are management uh, opportunities there. You know, I've always, uh, I, this is my opportunity to ask you guys because when I was when I was your age, actually, I'm old. Uh, we always called something the anemia of chronic disease, and my I always noticed that that was always associated or often associated with renal disease. People who were chronically ill had renal complications, and they were also anemic. And I know there's some bone marrow involvement, but isn't really the anemia of chronic disease an erythropoietin related, renally related consequence of chronic disease? Or am I wrong? Anybody want to tackle that? It's unfair. But go ahead. I, I, I would probably put it the other way, that the anemia of chronic kidney disease um, in part is due to the anemia of chronic disease. So chronic inflammation uh, uh, okay. stimulates IL-6 and other uh, factors that um, affect uh, erythropoiesis, and we may talk about this later. It increases... Uh, protein called hepcidin, which regulates iron absorption and iron availability. And that's the anemia of chronic disease. So you can imagine you can have it in somebody with rheumatoid arthritis because they're inflamed, normal kidney function. But CKD is a inflammatory state also. And so we see lots of inflammatory markers in the patients and it is driving a great deal of the anemia that we see. Is there a specific risk factor for anemia in CKD, or is it just all across the board? Is it, is it just- Well, anemia? diabetes, uh, if you have the presence of diabetes, you're far more likely to be anemic, and it's far less likely to resolve if we just observe it over the next 90 days. And once you get anemic uh, in the presence of chronic kidney disease, how does the anemia per se impact uh, patients' lives? Well, let me start with that because this is a real controversial issue. Um, obviously, um, in the last 30 years, a, a lot of focus has been on the impact of anemia on the quality of life. And many trials that I think we'll address later uh, really tried to look at advantages of normalizing hemoglobin or at least pushing your hemoglobin levels toward normal, 11 11 and a half grams. And although there's anecdotal evidence that individual patients feel better, uh, you know, all of us have our stories of a, an accountant or a professor who had a hemoglobin of nine, couldn't function, and hemoglobin goes up to 11 and felt fantastic. But the, the large trials have really not showed a direct impact on quality of life. That being said, there are physiologic advantages of getting hemoglobins above uh, 10. You know, there's, there's a distinction, it seems to me as a clinician, between where should you transfuse to in, in an acute state and where do people work best? In other words, they come out of the open heart operating room with a crit of 20, we would in the past crank them up to 30. Um, but the data shows they don't do better from a cardiovascular perspective. Yeah. On the other hand, right, what I hear you saying is they do better for, for life with better crits. Well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll start off and then hand it to Dan. I think we need to distinguish between acute anemia and, and chronic anemia. Yeah. So, so in, a, in a chronic state, uh, I do think there's opportunities for improvement of quality of life. In, in an acute phase, particularly if it's a relatively healthy individual, 
uh, they, 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 they can, without CKD, they can certainly manage their anemia. And Dan, uh, feel free, I didn't mean to cut you off. I, I would say, you know, you need to remember CKD is generally older people, people with diseases, they tend to be more sedentary. So when they get anemic, the anemia is not limiting their oxygen delivery. They're never pushing it to a point where they need that extra oxygen. It's different if you're an NBA player. If you're an NBA player with kidney transplant, you're gonna need some EPO to get to a normal hematocrit and function. But in reality, that's not who we treat. So I do see people in their 30s and 40s who are very active and have CKD, and they seem to function much better when their hemoglobin is normal or near normal and seem to be affected even when it's in the tens. Most of my patients don't feel any different in the high nines or 11s. And that's what the trials were really looking at, those types of patients. Does the staging of CKD depend on anemia? Is that part of your equation? No. No. The staging is related solely to uh, the uh, the EGFR, in other words, how, right. how severe the, the disease has progressed. And let me turn it the other way. Let me turn it upside down. In which stage of CKD does anemia really begin to play an important part? I, well, I would say in four. Yeah. Go ahead, Dan. Yeah. I, I would say in 3B, we start to see uh, a minority of patients who it's clearly a problem in, but mostly it's stage four CKD, which is less than 30% function. 